Hello students, welcome to today's video. Well, uh, with today's video, we are going to start our second chapter, which is the consumer equilibrium. Well, without any further ado, let's get into it, today's video and uh, talk about this chapter. Well, this chapter relates to the theory of consumer behavior. And uh, if I give you a very uh, big picture of this uh, chapter, so in this chapter we will basically talk about how the consumer is attaining his equilibrium. By equilibrium, I want to mean that how much he is getting satisfaction, how much he is maximizing his satisfaction. So all these things will be talked under this chapter. So before starting, let us concentrate on some few small concepts. The first thing is uh, we need to know who is a consumer. So consumer is a person who buys various goods and services with the help of his given income in the view of maximizing his satisfaction. So that means consumer is a person who has some given amount of income, he has some income in his pocket, he has some money in his pocket and with the help of that money, whatever he has in his pocket, he tries to buy some goods and services and by buying them, he basically wants to maximize his satisfaction. So this is a simple definition of consumer. Is a person he is a person who buys goods and services. With the help of his given income, in order to satisfy his Ones. So this is the simple definition of consumer my dear students that uh, he is a person who buys goods and services with the help of his given income in order to satisfy his wants. The next small concept that I would like to tell you is the concept of utility. of our one. Now you may ask me what is utility. So utility is uh, the one satisfying power of a commodity. That means whenever a commodity has uh, some power to satisfy our wants, then and then it gets some utility. For example, right now the video you are watching on a laptop, on a computer or maybe on a mobile. So that particular thing on which you are watching this video, that particular gadget has a utility because of the fact that it is satisfying your want. It is helping you to watch this video that could be your laptop, that could be your computer or that could be the mobile in your hand. So whatever it is, so it is satisfying your utility, your sorry, it is satisfying your needs. So hence we can say that that particular thing has a utility. Here I am in this uh, whiteboard, whiteboard is also has some utility. It is helping me to write with and this pen also, it is also helping me to write with. So I can say that these two things are helping me uh, for writing purpose so hence these two things have some utility and uh, this utility thing gets differed from person to person time to time and 
place to place. Now, by person to person, I want to mean that, uh, say, suppose uh, the use of a mobile or use of a computer, who is a, a very much software engineer, his requirement of a computer is very much high. He is constantly working on uh, computer to develop so many things and uh, taking us in his place will not give us that much utility of the computer or laptop most of the time with the with students what you guys do that uh, spend time on uh, playing uh, games watching videos movies and etc and etc hence the utility gets a little bit different from a software engineer then also the use of a, a mobile also how much you are needy for a mobile a person could be more needy for a mobile so that person whose requirement is bigger for the mobile for the communication needs his utility will be much more higher than compared to us uh, same for example if i want to give you a uh, thing for as a sound engineer who uses a big uh, headphone on his head so his requirement or his uh, need of that headphone is much more higher he, through that headphone he really hears so many details of that music of those sounds and he mixes them accordingly but what we do we just put that headphone on our hand and listen to the music so the utility doesn't remain same for a music director and for us. We can use the same headphone, a very high tech headphone that is being used on studio and we will be having less utility because it is uh, less much required to us to satisfy our wants. But a music director who is working on a studio, working on mixing things so his requirement is little bit higher so hence we can say that the utility differs from person to person similarly i can give you another example think of a person who has no watch no wristwatch and uh, at the same time you are having a mobile also and wristwatch also so if you give your wristwatch to that person who has no wristwatch his utility will be more higher because you can still watch the time on your mobile so hence we can say that that utility is really differing from person to person and utility also differs from time to time say for example um, the satisfaction we get wearing a uh, woolen cloth the satisfaction of wearing woolen cloth is much more higher during the time of winter but during the time of summer if we wear uh, a woolen cloth uh, people will say us he has gone mad so then, then the utility will definitely come down and then also it's uh, not that much comforting if we wear a um, woolen cloth during the summer season hence the utility also differs from time to time during the summer season, the cotton clocks or the fans or the ACs have more utility because they are more of uh, in need to satisfy our water that means to uh, satisfy our heating needs to cool us and uh, during the time of winter, the woolen clocks are in more need to keep us warm to save us from the cold and uh, utility also differs from place to place think for an example uh, you are uh, you have gone outside in traveling and you are staying uh, once you are staying in a two star hotel and in the uh, second moment you are staying in a five star hotel so obviously the facilities you will get in a five star hotel and the comfort you will get in a five star hotel is very much different compared to a to start hotel so we can easily say that utility also differs from time to time place to place and from person to person so this is the utility that it is the one to find power of a commodity
which is the one satisfying power of the commodity and it differs from time to time time to time place to place and person to person so this is the simple definition of utility that it is the one satisfying power of the commodity and it differs from time to time place to place and person to person well this utility is something different from what we know is usefulness so a commodity or an item may not be useful for us even when that commodity possesses us some utility by utility we mean that it is the one satisfying power of a commodity and by usefulness we mean whether that particular commodity is good for us or it is bad for us that means whether the particular commodity has some positive impact on us or negative impact on us if it is increasing our well being the commodity is increasing our well being if it has some positive impact on us that means that particular commodity has some usefulness for example uh, say suppose uh, smoking of cigarettes or drinking alcohol it is injurious to health and it is uh, not at all increasing our well being so hence we can say that this a uh, particular commodity that uh, cigarette or alcohol it is not useful for us but think closely whether it possesses some utility or not yes true it is having some utility even if it is not useful for us but a person who is a smoker or who is a drunkard that particular cigarette and uh, that bottle of wine or bottle of alcohol or anything is satisfying his or her wants the person who smokes cigarette then cigarette is helping him to satisfy his smoking needs although it is injurious to her it is not useful but it is satisfying his or her needs his uh, smoking needs or her smoking needs so that particular cigarette has some utility even if it doesn't possess any usefulness similarly the drinking of uh, alcohol which is injurious to health but a person who's a drunkard that bottle of wine or bottle of alcohol uh, is helping him to satisfy his drinking needs so even if that bottle of alcohol has no usefulness to us but it is possessing some utility so in short my dear students whenever we find that a commodity even it is good for us or bad for us uh, we are not judging that part so whenever we find that a commodity is satisfying our wants we can say that yes it is has some yes that uh, commodity has some utility and at the same time if you find that it is very much good for us then yes the commodity will have some usefulness as well as has some utility uh think for example um using a mobile 
with the use of mobile it really helping us uh, our needs our communication needs and so many other needs also so that particular mobile has utility and whether it is useful or it is not useful for us yes it is useful for us it is uh, increasing our well-being it is giving us some pleasure it is giving us some happiness we can do so many good things with mobile so yes the mobile has some utility as well as has some usefulness and at the same time think of uh, the medicines i'm sure in your life till now you have tasted some medicines which are so much bitter in taste you when you uh, take one spoon of medicine into your mouth and you just want to throw it right away but what to do you are sick you had to swallow it so we can say that medicine was those bitter medicines was not at all useful but yes it is having some utility it was helping you to satisfy your needs i mean it was it is helping you it was helping you to satisfy your illness needs it is helping you it was helping you to cure yourself but as it was bitter in stage we can say that that was not very much useful to us but for the sake of uh, getting cured we had to swallow it so that thing that medicine was really has some utility even though that was not useful so this is the small difference between usefulness and utility so i hope you have got that well uh, the next thing we will discuss the next concept well my dear students let me tell you all these things uh, we are digging in this video are basically various concepts that are associated with this chapter and we will be coming to this concept again and again and again and these concepts are also being asked in exam level also so i request you to please go through all these concepts what i am uh, discussing in this video so that you do not find any problem well the next thing we are talking about is the cardinal utility well the cardinal concept of utility was basically uh, put forwarded by uh, some classical economists and uh, they said that this utility can be measured in cardinal numbers like 1 2 3 4 let means uh, i can ask you that uh, how much you have got uh, satisfaction you can say 100 200 300 and at the same time there was no particular unit of measurement uh, by this i want to mean that uh, so suppose this uh, if i if we want to measure weight we there is some unit of measuring weight in tons or in kg there is some unit for distance we can use meter kilometer uh, miles and so on and so forth for height uh, we can uh, use inches uh, or centimeters or anything something like that so everything uh, for money we can use rupees or dollar so everything has a unit of measurement but this utility didn't have any unit of measurement hence when the concept of utility was first getting formulated so classical economists give a psychological name that it is utils and they refer to that that utility is entirely psychological concept and it can be measured in cardinal numbers like 1 2 3 4 and uh, the unit of measurement is a psychological unit which is called as utils like i can ask you uh, suppose you are writing with a pen and uh, i have asked you that uh, hey uh what is your utility level and you can tell me that uh, my utility level 
is uh, 200 Indians. Some other guy can say that my utility is uh, 10,000 Indians. So it's entirely psychological and it differs from person to person. So I am writing adding and liquidity. According to classical economists, Well, this is the cardinal inutility. That what is cardinal inutility? It is uh, in a very lucid way. If we want to say that what is cardinal inutility? That according to classical economy, that utility can be measured in cardinal numbers one, two, three, four, etc. And this is the cardinal inutility. That means it can be measured in cardinal numbers like one, two, three, four, five, six, and at the same time there was no unit of measurement hence they gave psychological unit they gave an psycho they gave a psychological unit of measurement of utility called utils so the unit of measurement by actually i want to mean that uh, as there is uh, some unit of measurement for money rupees dollars some unit of measurement of weight uh, kilograms or tons and as there is some unit of measurement for distance also uh, for time also minutes, seconds, hours, months, years and decades so there is some unit of measurement of time also for distance also we have uh, kilometer, meter, centimeter or something like that but there was no measurement unit for the utility now, if I ask you how much your utility level, it is 1. 1 what? It is 1000. Well, 1000 what? We have to be something. If I say you how much money you have, you will tell me that I have 10,000 rupees. Well, there is the something. 10,000 rupees. If I say you, you know, just normally say it is 10,000. So, 10,000 could mean anything. It could be rupees also, it could be dollars also, it could be pound also. So we need to specify the unit of measurement whether 10,000 is dollar or 10,000 is pound or 10,000 is just rupees. So similarly here also uh, you may ask me that how much satisfaction I am getting from using this particular whiteboard marker. I can say it is uh, 1,000. Well 1,000 what? I need to add this thing that 1,000 utils. So this is the ultimately the simple concept of cardinal utility that a utility can be measured in
कार्डिनल नंबर्स वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड एस देर वाज नो मेजरमेंट ऑफ पर्टिकुलर मेजरमेंट यूनिट ऑफ यूटिलिटी सो क्लासिकल इकोनॉमिक्स हैव आल्सो गिवन साइकोलॉजिकल यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट व्हिच इज कॉल्ड द यूटिलिटी सो आई कैन नाउ आस्क यू दैट हाउ मच यूटिलिटी यू आर हैविंग from uh, wearing a wrist watch you can tell me that uh, you are having uh, 5100 utils some other can say that uh, according to his way that he or she might be having 10200 utils so ultimately the main idea is that it really differs from person to person time to time and place to place the satisfaction i will have wearing a uh, wrist watch if the same wrist watch is being worn by you you will be having some different kind of satisfaction so utility and the satisfaction thing is really entirely psychological and it is entirely psychological phenomenon that utility well so this is it the next thing we are going to discuss is the various uh, assumptions that are associated with the analysis of consumer equilibrium Well, my dear students, uh, I forgot to tell you at first that uh, in the consumer equilibrium chapter, we will be dealing with two types of utility concepts. One is cardinal utility concept, and another is ordinal utility concept. The cardinal utility, we just write down, we learn that uh, it is a type of utility which can be measured in cardinal numbers: one, two, three, four, five. And so on and so forth. And uh, as the chapter will proceed, we will come to another one, which is called the ordinal utility analysis. In ordinal utility analysis, uh, the name is of suggesting that it is something related with order. So we will be ranking our utility preferences. So these are the two types of utility concepts which we will be dealing with in this chapter. Well, uh, let me go through. the last topic for today the assumptions of consumer equilibrium under cardinal utility analysis so the first assumption is that consumer is assumed to be rational consumer is assumed to be rational and by rational i want to mean that that he is assumed to be rational in the sense that he always tries to maximize his utility maximize his satisfaction uh, let me give an example you will understand say for example you have gone into shopping 
and uh, going into shopping while uh, talking with the salesman the main goal in your mind is that how to decrease the price even if you can get it free it is even good then and then you will be having much more satisfaction so the main concentration of yours is to decrease the uh, selling price and uh, get as minimum price as possible and you are not at all prepared to give some extra money to the sales buy so you always not you we always with the consumers we always want to be rational and we try to maximize our satisfaction by bargaining things or by any sort of thing we basically want to maximize our satisfaction so consumer is assumed to be rational the next assumption is that utility can be measured in cardinal utility can be measured in cardinal numbers finally there is something operation of uh, diminishing marginal utility diminishing marginal utility is associated diminishing marginal utility is in operation well uh, my dear students look in this chapter also we have got this marginal concept so this marginal concept will be coming over and over again throughout the entire uh, life of economics well uh, the diminishing marginal utility basically i am giving a small concept and uh, later on we will have a big discussion on the diminishing marginal utility so diminishing marginal utility says that as we have more of one commodity the utility we are having from the each successive unit gets diminishes uh, for example you are very thirsty and uh, the utility you will having the satisfaction you will having by drinking the first glass of water will be much more higher compared to the second glass of water the second glass of water will give you satisfaction but the satisfaction level will be somewhat lesser compared to the first glass of water so hence the satisfaction level is coming down the utility level is coming down so this is the thing this thing is called the diminishing marginal utility and finally there is one last assumption that constant marginal utility of money constant marginal utility of money so in very simple terms marginal utility of money implies the worth of having some extra unit of money so this is it my dear students for uh, today's video so in this video we have really talked about some very simple concepts and these concepts are very much relevant to understand this chapter and the chapters that are coming in form so i recommend you to go through this video again and again and if you find any doubt or if you find any problem with this concept feel free to comment below in the comment box and i will get to you as soon as possible and uh, we will meet in our next video till then stay safe stay strong 